now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 606, it's O'Connor and Company on this Thursday morning, a busy one too. Uh, later on in the program, we're going to speak with the plastic surgeon about what the heck that was on Joe Biden's chin as he was greeting reporters. Yes. Did you see he had two little like Yikes. silicone balls or something at the bottom oh, of his chin? It's, it was what, odd. Growths? It's I don't know what it is. It could be oh, growths. No. It could be a, a you know that um, series botched where the plastic yes? surgeons. Yeah, I love that show. It could, I, he may have had chin implants and it's gone wrong or something. I don't know. It's like the butt implants that you flip around. <laughs> All right, yeah, don't worry. Don't <laughs> just just go Google it, folks. It's yeah. kind of crazy to see. <laughs> At 6.35, we'll speak with Henry Eichelberg to discuss his run for Loudoun Treasurer. 805 Matt Foldy, who was there at the Capitol yesterday during the darkest day in American history, the Hamas erection. I'm Larry O'Connor. That's Patrice Anwuka. Neither of us have butt or chin implants, by no, the way. No, we don't. We're yeah. all natural here. Actually, I'm not 100% natural. Let me just say. <laughs> I am. <laughs> A little hair situation. Well, I mean that's real hair. I also I had growing. jaw surgery when I was like uh, no, they, not twenty to, years unless old. Unless it was to enhance your jaw and no, have it was orthodontic. Like a, all right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I like we like to bear it all here, as it were. <laughs> Bart Marcois writes at the American Greatness website, which is one of our favorites, and he also is a Fairfax County resident. <laughs> And he brings a troubling story to our attention, Bart. Although it's funny, it's like, wow, this is really disconcerting. It shouldn't be. It should be a slam dunk, right? Rules are rules. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you for having me on, Larry and Patrice. It's a pleasure. So, Bart, uh, we all know that when you run for office, there's a process to get on the ballot. Uh, one of those processes is to get petitions, right? You go around to your neighbors. That's how we can qualify people for a ballot. And you get a certain number of signatures, and that gets you on. It's usually a low threshold, but it's it's an important process to go through. What's happening in Fairfax County with that process? Well, it is so troubling because I, it's, to my knowledge, it's never happened before that they have applied this process unequally. Um, they, there's a school board candidate who has circulated, she circulated her petitions. And usually, I've done this before, I've circulated petitions for people. You stand in front of the grocery store, you go to the giant, and you ask people, my friend wants to get on the ballot, or, or I support this person, wants to get on the ballot. Will you sign? Are you a registered voter? And they say yes. And the rules are very simple. You, you know, they sign their name, they have to date it. Uh, and they have to they 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 have to be registered voters. And she needed 125 signatures. And so she went out and she got about 125 signatures. Some of them were disqualified. Smart people get 250 or 300 if they need 125 because they know that some of the signatures will be disqualified. The county clerk disqualified signatures down to exactly 125 and then wrote 125 at the bottom and certified the petitions. Uh. But, hmm. but at least two of her petitions did not follow the rules, and he should have thrown out two of those, position, those petitions, which contain a total of 17 signatures. She did not get her her required 125 signatures and she needs to be thrown off the ballot well bart i mean it, it seems like common sense um and i would think of playing by the rules and, and ensuring that the rules everybody follows the rules is what we expect in in our elections and then when you question then when you question those who are not following the rules somehow <laughs> you're the bad guy do you think this is more than this is a widespread problem or is it just limited to this this candidate in this race i i have to think it's a widespread problem because that you we only found out because some alert voters went in and asked to see the petitions and said wait a minute you know what where are the where are the rules being applied here? Mm -hmm. And they demanded to see them. And the Fairfax County, I, I forgot to mention an important part. She is a Democrat. You, you could ah. not have figured that out mm. by the fact that they're not following the rules. Um, it's the same issue as as the uh, one you've uh, you're discussing also today, the 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 
the Capitol riot. Either either the rules apply or they don't. Hmm. Um, uh, and yeah. and I think that they must be doing it to others. The the voters came in. Fairfax County Republican Party filed a lawsuit on the six signatures that did not have dates on them. Why does that matter? Well, first of all, it matters because the law says it matters. Right. But but the reason for that is if the signatures aren't dated, each of these petitions has to be notarized, and the notary has to say, yes, this person who says I was the petition circulator is this person, and they're, and she's sitting in front of me, and she signed this form in front of me, and I saw all these signatures on the page. Well, if they're not dated, they could have been added after the after the notary notarized it. That was the original issue. Well, the judge took that, and he said, you know what? The law allows me discretion whether or not to rule on this or kick it to the electoral board. I'm going to kick this to the electoral board. Mm -hmm. And in discovery in that legal case, they found, hey, there's a whole other petition page that doesn't have her home address written on the front properly. Well, the law says specifically not having the correct address on the front of the petition is a material omission and it invalidates that petition and that one has to be ruled on so i think fairfax county has filed again to go before the judge because they don't trust the electoral board to have the backbone to apply the law they they think they 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 fear that the electoral board the electoral board has been silent and they fear that they're not going to do anything. And in the article, I named the members of the electoral board. Yeah. And so now this is um, this has to do with the candidate, Marsha St. John Cunning, right? Franconia District for school board in Fairfax County. And the Fairfax County Registrar, Eric Spicer, this is ultimately his responsibility. He's His job is to check these things. And we hear about this all the time. You hear about um, ballot measures not making it to the final ballot mm-hmm. because too many uh, petitions have been... Too many signatures have been disqualified from the petitions. It's it's a standard procedure to audit these petitions and ensure that they got the requisite number. And if they don't, sorry, those are the rules. That's the law. Mm-hmm. Where has Mr. Spicer come down on this? The registrar, it seems like it's a, a slam dunk. You didn't provide the signatures. Your name won't be on the ballot. He's hiding. He will not answer any inquiries. He, 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 he has said absolutely nothing. He he. Certified it. I think it was a fraudulent certification, and mm-hmm. and now he's uh, he's not hiding. You know who made a political career based on challenging ballot signatures on uh, on the petitions for his political opponents was Barack Hussein Obama, mm. and he said, mm-hmm. you know, if they can't even organize a petition drive, how can they govern effectively? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, that's right. I remember that. All right. So, uh, Bart, one last question here, and we're right up against it. Uh, Bart Marquise is our guest, American Greatness in Fairfax County. Uh, people are voting already. The ballots are done. They're out there. What, what's mm-hmm. the remedy at this point? The remedy is the electoral board issues or a judge issues a decree that says this person was not allowed to be on the ballot and. Any votes for her, any votes cast for her don't matter because huh. she was not wow. supposed to be oh, there. Oh, but what a can of worms, because then you'll get the lawsuits of disenfranchisement, and then you'll mm-hmm. get a judge saying, well, clearly this is who they wanted to vote for, so even if she shouldn't have been on the ballot, we should let it go. For- oh, it's a mess. This is why we have yeah. rules. So vote for her opponent. Yeah. He, his name is Kevin Pinkney, and I don't know him. So this isn't about him. Uh, but vote for that guy. He followed the he rules. Followed the rules. Yeah. He followed the rules. All right, Bart wow. McCoy's. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. So Thank much, you. Bart. Once again, Thank we have you. To, we have to ask uh, Merrick Garland. You know, we, he keeps saying there aren't two sets of rules, so let's apply the let's rules. Let's see. Yeah. Six fifteen. 